All right, guys, the electron configuration for the Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions. The first thing I'm going to do with you is the electron configuration for an uncharged Fe atom. And the way that I create that is with my periodic table, remembering that this is the S block, the P block, and the D block. Here's what I mean. The electron configuration for iron starts with 1s2 for the two electrons in the first s block. Going down to the second row, we have a 2s, which holds two electrons. We have a 2p, which holds six electrons. Notice that the p block is six wide. We have a 3s2. We have a 3p6. We have a 4s2. And then we get into this D block. Now this is actually the 3D, even though it's in the fourth row of the periodic table, because of the way that the electron configurations work. One, two, three, four, five, and it's the sixth element in that D block. So we have 3D6. So this is the electron configuration for regular iron. When you create an ion, from its uncharged atom, the first shell that you remove electrons from is the one with the highest n, or in this case, the highest number. You're going to remove 4s electrons before you remove 3d electrons, because 4 is bigger than 3, even though you filled the d orbitals after you filled these s orbitals. So the electron configuration for Fe2+, removing two electrons from the highest n orbital. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s0 now, so I'm not gonna write anything, 3d6. This is the electron configuration for Fe2+. It's the same, but you remove two 4s electrons. If you are going to remove another electron, make the Fe3 plus ion, now you can start removing them from the last filled orbitals, or rather the Ds in this case. We need to remove one extra electron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d, and we remove an electron to make it 3d5. Now this is actually a stable configuration because the d orbitals are just fine with being exactly half filled, and the d's can hold 10 electrons since the d block is 10 atoms wide. Here's your electron configurations for the irons. Best of luck.